What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and just today, Games Workshop announced a bunch of new Battle Force sets this year for the Christmas season. So what we're going to be doing today is going through all of the Warhammer 40k Battle Forces for 2022 holiday cheer and talk about which ones are the most valuable. Today we're not really going to be talking about the individual monetary value of each because we don't know the final cost for each of these sets, although they're probably going to be around the $300 USD mark since it looks like the contents of each are going to be around $300 to $350 US dollars. Instead what we're going to be doing is talking about each of these kits as a gateway into their individual factions and ranking them based on how useful each of the units contained with each one is for their respective army. So let's do it. There are eight total battle force boxes for this season. Those being the Adeptus Sororitas. Oh gosh. Oh, I got something in my eye. Those being the Adeptus Sororitas Sanctorum Guard, the Adeptus Custodes Watchers of the Gate, the Adeptus Mechanicus Elimination Maniple, the Imperial Knights Chainbreaker Lance, the Death Guard Council of the Death Lord, Thousand Sons Court of the Crimson King, Imperial Fists Bastion Strike Force, and Raven Guard Raven Strike Battle Force. So starting with the best, let's go down the list and talk about the relative value of each of these Battle Force boxes. The first one, in my opinion, is going to be the Imperial Knight's Chainbreaker Lance. This kit includes two sets of Armagers, one set of Warglaives, one set of Armager Halverins, alongside a Canis Rex kit that can create a Knight Preceptor. Now, the benefit of this particular Battle Force is that that Knight Preceptor kit actually includes all of the bits to build any of the other Knight loadouts on that chassis. While Knight Preceptors don't see a ton of play, units like Paladins or Knight Errants do pretty often, and you're going to get the pieces to build any of those in the kit. If you're an Adept Hobbyist, you can even get in there with some Magnets and really customize the hell out of this Knight, and potentially have the opportunity to build any of those Knight loadouts. On top of that, Armagers are almost universally useful. Knight lists tend to be composed of several Armagers orbiting around one big character knight who can hands out bondsman buffs to them, and that is exactly what this battle force is going to be doing. That's why I think it's probably the most efficient one for your cost, especially if you're trying to get into Imperial Knights. Number two is going to be the Adeptus Auroritas Sanctorum Guard. Now, interestingly about all of these Battle Force boxes is that they're very much for players who are new to the faction and just getting in. And that's evidenced by the fact that this set includes Morvan Vol. Morvan Vol is an incredible force multiplier for any Adeptus Sororitas list and can grant full rerolls to any core keyworded Sororitas unit, which thankfully includes everything in the Sanctorum Guard box. The box is composed of 10 Battle Sisters alongside two kits of three Paragon Warsuits and five Celestian Sacrosants. While the Sacrosants are fine and can give you a little bit more protection for your characters as well as some melee punch, they don't see a ton of competitive play right now and generally get overshadowed by units like Zephyrim or Repentia. On the other hand though, you're always going to bring Morvenval and those 10 Battle Sisters are going to be very useful to build out your Battalion Detachment. One unit of Paragon Warsuits is potentially playable in a lot of different Adeptus Sororitas sub-factions and oftentimes you see one in Bloody Rose lists so the, that are the most popular for Adeptus Sororitas right now. But if you're going to pivot a little bit and play a Valorous Heart build, which is much tankier, Paragon Warsuits are basically the core of that army. And so this Battle Force box gives you a very good intro into a style of list like that one. Even if you're just playing normal Bloody Rose stuff, you may have one extra unit of Paragon Warsuits you can trade for something else, but everything else in the box is incredibly playable. Moving on to number three, we have the Adeptus Custodes Watchers of the Gate. This box is a little bit weird. Adeptus Custodes tend to be a very elite army and focus very heavily on not only their characters, but also their low model count, highly elite units. For that reason, it's strange that this includes three sets of Custodian Guards. Typically, you'll play Custodian Guardsmen in units of three, and they'll fill out a battalion detachment or a couple patrol detachments in those small units to hold backline objectives very safely with some very hard to kill objective secured troops options. For that reason, 15 in the box is a lot. However, you also get three Alaris Custodians in Terminator armor, Trajan Valoris, as well as a unit of three Virtus Praetors. Those Virtus Praetors are always useful. Trajan Valoris is basically an auto include in every Adeptus Custodes armor and the Alaris Custodians are good individually in singletons and can also be used to build characters like Vexillus Praetors and a Shield Captain. The same goes for the Custodian Guards. You can also build those into characters if you want to. And so getting a couple extra in this kit isn't actually too bad. 
That's why I think the Custodes box is at number three. It's not the most competitive thing in the world, but basically all of the inclusions in the kit are very useful and you can use them to build out more competitive options. That moves us on to the Adeptus Mechanicus Elimination Maniple. This one includes Belisarius Call, the special character for Adeptus Mechanicus, a set of two Castellan robots, two units of three Cataphrons that can be assembled either as destroyers or breachers, as well as 10 Skitari Rangers. The Skitari Rangers are probably gonna see play in all of your lists because they're just solid troops options. Castellan Robots are very useful, and Cataphrons do see some play. Especially in their Breacher loadout, you don't typically see them built out as destroyers. The one loser out of this kit is Belisarius Call. You don't typically see him, and though Mars is a very popular Forge World to play because of its sub-faction bonuses, Belisarius, while he can be taken in that sub-faction, doesn't usually show up in those lists. That said, with everything else in the box being relatively playable, the fact that you have one looser unit in there isn't the end of the world. That is why I put it at number four, however, below the other options. And that moves us on to the next one. We're gonna talk about some chaos here because number five, we have the Death Guard Council of the Death Lord. Now this is in a little bit of a similar boat to the Adeptus Mechanicus package. This kit includes five Blightlord Terminators as well as an awkward 14 Plague Marines. All of those infantry are absolutely great. Death Guard Terminators are pretty playable and and Plague Marines are very strong troops options. You also get Mortarian in the box, which is probably the worst unit to include. He's very expensive and a little bit slow and easy to kill in the current metagame, so he doesn't see a ton of play. Death Guard lists will typically just focus on their infantry way more heavily than the Lord of Death himself. That said, he's not terrible. He's just a little bit overcosted for his level of survivability. He's been kind of overshadowed by other options in the game since his release. So if you're okay with getting a Mortarian that you may or may not play, depending on how you decide to build your Death Guard list, this might be a pretty solid pick. Now, that's not going to be the same thing we're going to say about the next Primarch to talk about, because number six on the list is Thousand Suns. The Council of the Crimson King box is probably the, the maybe the weirdest one on this list. It includes 20 Rubric Marines, which is great. Rubric Marines are the backbone of any Thousand Suns list, and you're going to be playing... 20 to 30 of them in basically any list that you play. That said, it also includes three Exalted Sorcerers, which I'm not totally sure about, as well as Magnus the Red. Magnus, unfortunately, is pretty bad, and he's kind of a big do-nothing in the army. He definitely saw a big fall from grace from his 8th edition incarnation, where he was one of the strongest characters in the game. He's not totally unplayable, but generally speaking, you're going to want to stay far away from him and focus more on the Thousand Suns infantry, like the aforementioned Rubric Marines, as well as Scarab Occult Terminators. The three Exalted Sorcerers is a weird one, but I think you can make it work. If you use those to convert your two big bricks of 10 Rubric Marines into four bricks of five by using them as the aspiring sorcerers in the unit, you get pretty good value there. You can also probably convince your opponent that they're either standard sorcerers or infernal masters, and that will basically build out the HQ loadout that most Thousand Suns lists tend to bring. You'd also want to add Aramon to this list, and I think there is a disc-mounted Exalted Sorcerer that you could probably tell your opponent is Aramon, and, and I think the rest of this box is pretty competitive. The big downside there is Magnus the Red. You're probably not going to be playing that guy. And that brings us out of the Eye of Terror and back into the safety of the Imperium, because we're going to be talking about some Space Marine Battle Forces now. At number seven, I have the Ravenstrike Battle Force. Inky's having a freak out because I won't let her out of her room. I don't know if that shows up on the microphone, but <laughs> if it does, I'm going to have to probably re-record this. Now, the selection of chapters that Games Workshop has elected to include in the Battle Forces for this season are pretty weird ones because the worst two armies in the game are the last two battle forces we have to talk about here. And that's why I actually think that this Ravenstrike battle force is probably better off as the start to an Ultramarines army than it is true Raven Guard. It includes 10 Reavers, a unit of three Eliminators, Cave and Shrike, a Phobos Librarian, as well as two Invictor Tactical Warsuits. Now the first sinker we have here are the Reavers. They are not very useful Primaris infantry. They're basically the same cost as any of the other Primaris infantry options, but with lacking some of the additional abilities, like the ability to forward deploy as incursors or infiltrators have, and objective secured not being a troops option. That means that you can't use them to fill out your troop selections, which unfortunately for Space Marines is generally what you want your infantry to be doing, because the Space Marine infantry that don't have jetpacks aren't super useful. That said, I think Reavers are still fine, if you assemble them with their bull carbines, replace their heads and tell your opponent they're incursors. <laughs> 
If we do a little bit of conversion, we can make these guys into a different unit that does fill your troop slot. And I actually think having all those Primaris bodies in your army is just gonna be okay. The Eliminators are great and the Phobos Librarian does see a lot of play. There are some really cool combos you can do with that guy and having forward deploy on any Space Marine army is pretty useful. The Invictor War Suits are where I think we start to pivot specifically into Ultramarines because Ultramarines do have specific synergy with those Invictor War Suits. As I talked about in my Space Marine chapter breakdown video, Ultramarines can deploy those Invictor War Suits in an aggressive position and then if they lose the role to go first, redeploy them back into their deployment zone, which no other chapter really has the opportunity to do. That means that Invictor War Suits basically only see play in Ultramarines lists and that's why I think you would want to paint these guys blue if you ended up picking up this kit. Cave and Shrike is also really good conversion fodder for a jump captain of some variety. You can make a smash captain out of him and I think it would look really cool. And that brings us on to what is in my opinion the worst of the battle forces for this holiday season, the Imperial Fist's Bastion Strike Force. This one gets wombo comboed, one-two punched by unfortunate circumstances. The first one being that uh, it, it is sort of Imperial Fist adjacent, which is the worst army in 40k right now. They're just, they don't do anything and that's sad. It's also filled with Gravis Infantry, which tend to be pretty hit or miss. Eradicators are great, but they forgot to include Eradicators in this set. Instead, you get a pack of three Aggressors, as well as a massive 15 Heavy Intercessors alongside Torgaradon. Torgaradon is an okay character. The downside is that he is in Imperial Fist, so he can't be played in any chapters that, you know, you'd actually want to be playing. And unfortunately, while you can convert him into maybe a Gravis Captain. Gravis Captains themselves aren't particularly useful, so you don't really want to have that either. Games Workshop hasn't done a great job with Gravis Infantry on the whole. You tend to only see them sometimes in Death Watch and Salamanders, and Heavy Intercessors are probably the worst out of the bunch. They just basically have the same offensive profile as slightly better Intercessors, while being, while harder to kill, a lot more expensive, and they fill out a ton of your points with basically do-nothing troops that you want to be sitting in the back of your army. Space Marines are already very expensive and probably too expensive for the amount of damage that they do, and if you're paying extra points on your tax troops options by taking Heavy Intercessors, you're probably having less points in units that are actually dealing damage to your opponent. At most, you probably see one unit of Heavy Intercessors to act as a really, really thick uh, front or back line so that they are survivable against a lot of enemy shooting, but I don't think you would be taking 15. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't really recommend people pick this kit up. Gravis Infantry are just not that great outside of the aforementioned Eradicators and uh, the character you get in there. Uh, doesn't even make great conversion fodder. And with that, those are my opinions on the new Battle Force sets for 2022. Let me know what you think about these sets down in the comment section below. Are you going to pick any of them up? And if so, which ones and why? Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Big thanks to everyone who supports the channel, either over on Patreon at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise. YouTube channel members, Twitch subscribers, all you people are great. In addition, remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.